What's good? What's good, family? What's good? It's your boy, Urban Sports Guru. Uh, just finished getting my getting my money in. Hit a personal high today. Pretty proud of that. But I want to get at y'all about some NBA talk. Happy Labor Day, Labor Day everybody. Hope everybody have enjoys their holiday and are safe this weekend. But uh, I want to get at y'all about some basketball. Um what I see happening in this series. First and foremost, let's start with the Eastern Conference. Um, I feel sorry for Giannis. Let me tell you why. Coming into the series, I thought Bucks would win in seven games. I guess, theoretically, it could still happen, but it doesn't look that way. It looks like they're going to get swept, if not five games tops. I think they're going to get swept. I feel sorry for Giannis because at the beginning of the season, I picked him for MVP. And looks like my prediction is going to be correct. He's going to win MVP for the second time in a row, along with winning Defensive Player of the Year. Defensive Player of the Year in the same season. Only a few people have done that. Um, Hakeem, um, Hakeem has done that. MJ has done that. On top of my head, those are only two I could think of. Um, where I feel sorry for him. The reason why I picked him for MVP at the beginning of the year is because I picked him for MVP at the beginning of the year is because the other people who will be candidates for MVP had another bona fide superstar playing with them that will cancel them out a little bit. You know what I'm saying? James Harden ran the MVP, had Russ. He had Russ. Um, Russ is playing with James Harden. LeBron James is playing with AD. AD's playing with LeBron. You know, Kawhi's got a low manage and... PG was a uh, MVP candidate last year. You know, Steph, Steph had a shot, but I didn't think he'll make it through the season, and he didn't. So that just left um, Giannis, because he's the only one who's not playing with a bona fide superstar. So that made MVP m- make sense. All the rest of the guys are getting the benefit of playing with another MVP. This is where the drawback of not playing with another MVP calendar caliber player, this is where that drawback comes into play. Chris Middleton is good. Chris Middleton is an all-star. I think he's an all-star because he's playing with Giannis, but he's a damn good player. He is not a, he's not a superstar and will never, ever be a superstar. He can't compete with the other top wings in the league. Jimmy Butler, like, Jimmy Butler is taking over this series. From game one, he's taking over the series. He's put his foot on the neck of the series, and he has controlled it. And the fact that Giannis, because of his game being what it is, his limitations on the perimeter, because of that, he needs another MVP calendar player, preferably a a ball handler or a guard, to make plays consistently. And it's not that um, it is not that dude is playing bad. He's just not able to match Jimmy Butler at all, at all. So Giannis is still going to be able to put up certain numbers, but it's not going to have the the the, the meaning. The, the the it's not going to have the impact that is required for him to have. They're putting up that wall. I noticed there are times where he's hesitant when the ball gets reversed, and then it comes back to him. He's at the top of the key. He has a moment or two where the wall is not, but he just has a defender and he hesitates, and he hesitates where he could just go, I think the improvement in his game is going to have to come, dare I say it, from the low post. Because I don't see at this point with all the work he's put in him, the problem with his game on the, on the perimeter is that not only can he not shoot, is that he has no wiggle in his game. Like Ben Simmons can't shoot and won't even try to shoot, but guess what? He has wiggle in his game. Ben, ben Simmons will cross the shit out of you. I'm saying, when you're going to be someone who only drives, you have to have wiggle. You got to have, you got to have that elusiveness in your game. And Giannis doesn't have that. He has the athleticism to Euro. He's really good at that. And even with that, you know, he draws, he catches a lot of charges. He catches more charges than anyone else in the NBA. Doris Burke mentioned that, and I appreciate that. But he doesn't have that wiggle in his game, and because he doesn't have that wiggle in his game, it it really hurts them. I think that the next step of growth in this game was going to have to come from the low post, him actually developing a low post game. So this way, in those crunch time moments, they can just feed him the ball there instead of trying to feed him at the top of the key and they're setting up this wall. Because if you set him up in the post, 
And if he actually has a little post game instead of him just trying to muscle through guys, then guess what? You could play off there through double teams, et cetera, et cetera. But as of right now, he doesn't have that. He doesn't have that. He's still so much playing off of freakish, Greek freak, freakish athleticism. And he's maximized that to the point where he was able to get him the MVP. But that team constituted as what it is is not going to get him a championship. Now, as far as the other Eastern Conference series, to be honest with you, I didn't even want to watch it, but I have. Going into the series, I thought that Boston losing Gordon Haywood would make the series a little bit closer, where it would be instead of Celtics in five, it would be Celtics in six. But seeing the way they play out, Boston has way too much skill for Toronto. Toronto can't really keep up. I still say Boston in five. Some of these series are not even worth watching because the skill level between one team and the next is so drastic. Um, then you go to the Western Conference. We have Denver and the Clippers. I said, going into the series, I thought Clippers in six. It should be Clippers in five, but I said Clippers in six for the simple fact that Clippers have to show me consistency. They have to show me consistency. Paul George has to show me consistency. The only thing consistent about the Clippers has been Kawhi Leonard. Their lineup hasn't been consistent. Their second best player hasn't been consistent. And the defense hasn't been consistent. When they have all three things, I don't think anybody can beat them in a seven game series. Nobody. Nobody, nobody. Nobody, nobody, nobody. But guess what? They're not consistent. They haven't had, they barely had everybody in the lineup all year. Thankfully, they got everybody now. Thankfully, they got everybody now. But they haven't been consistent. So I'm going to stick to that Clippers in six games. I expect Jamal Murray, who's become a, a superstar in these playoffs. And they have a nice budding big three on the way. You know what I'm saying? Michael Porter Jordan is getting some valuable experience. I like the big, what they got brewing for the future. And as far as the other Western Conference Series, Lakers and Houston, coming Coming into the season, I did not like Houston at all. I did not. I really did not. And I did not like them because James Harden can't be trusted. Russell, Russell Westbrook in the playoffs can't be trusted. And Mike D'Antoni in the playoffs can't be trusted. But one thing I've noticed in the bubble, teams are all really trying to play like them. And teams are really just letting it fly. What makes Houston successful is the fact that they play like this all the time. That's what made me optimistic about them in the playoffs. And last night watching that game, they did, this is what they need to do against the Lakers, and they did all three things. A, Harden has to look like an MVP. He did that. B, they have to play great defense. They did that. The D'Antoni coach team playing defense. Who knew? But most importantly, they controlled the glass. They controlled the glass. I don't think they won the rebounding battle, but the simple fact they didn't get embarrassed. They kept it even. That team should never keep the rebounding battle, rebounding battle even against anybody, let alone the Lakers with all their seven-footers. Should never be that way. When you watch the Lakers, because they don't consistently shoot the ball well, they crash the glass very well. They killed Portland. This is a Portland team with, with good seven-footers. They killed them on the offensive glass. They didn't do that to Houston last night. They didn't do that to Houston last night. Now, last night, Houston shot the ball very well. They shoot about 53 pointers a game. And when they're making 20 plus, they're a difficult team to beat. They are a very, very difficult team to beat. If they're making that many threes and being respectable on the glass, they're going to be tough to beat for anybody. I still think Lakers in six because the Lakers are a tough defensive team, very tough defensive team, know how to use all that length. And quite frankly, James Harden got to show me. He got to show me he could do this three more times in the series against LeBron James. He got to show me. That's just my take. It's your boy, Urban Sports Guru, and I'm out. Salute.